and actions. My mind is alert, focused at all times. I shall show respect to everyone always and every time. I remain a better leader and team player always. So I pledge. Welcome back, cherished viewers and audience out there. This is Leadership 360. If this is your first time of tuning in into the program, there's a program that is aimed at educating all of us on leadership development so as to better the lot of our societies, our country, and our continent at large. Let me quickly take the opportunity to wish all of us a prosperous 2024. This year, we must all work hard on our leadership skills so as to make or to better the lot of our society, Ghana, Africa, and the globe at large. We are live on DSTV channel 277. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in. This is a program meant for you and I. Today, we believe that temperaments influence everything we do, every aspect of our life. Be it from the family units, our interactions with our friends, colleagues at work, and even eventually culminating in how we lead and how we perceive or interact with our leaders as well. So we're going to pursue questions such as, what is temperament? What are the different types of temperament? And how do each of these temperament types play out positively and negatively in our lives? And so we have a guest in studio to assist us to find answers, critical answers to these things this question so as to help us appreciate largely our own temperament and that those of our leaders so that we can learn or learn and relearn for the betterment of our society. Our guest is a professional whose passion lies within the space of temperament, leadership development with focus on temperament. And she's been into risk management as a profession, but her passion lies with temperament. By profession, I would say a chartered banker with focus on business continuity management systems. And she is also the president of Women Network within the organization. She's an alumnus of Central University in Ghana. And she's um, by way of studies, she's done business administration, banking, and so on and so forth. She's a member of Institute of Directors Ghana and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Leadership and Governance, Ghana and USA. Our guest this afternoon, cherished viewers and audience out there, is no other than Mrs. Theodora Senaya. Mrs. Welcome to Leadership 360. Thank you very much, Doc. I'm honored to be here today, especially we, being your maiden session exactly. for this year. We are happy that you opened the gates to mm. 2024 Leadership 360. What a privilege. We are Thank so excited. You. The team was excited that we're going to start the, top, the program, the year with temperament. So uh, how did you, just to set the ball rolling, how did you get into this space of temperament? Hmm. Well, it's very interesting. Um, I never believed or planned that I would be talking about temperament because a few years ago when you, you, know, you, you, you hear about melancholy, choleric, you know, the sanguine, and yes, you hear this, these words, but they sounded so big and complicated, and especially when you hear this person, uh, the, the, this particular temperament is A, B, C, you know, so it was quite a bit of like, what, which is, what is all this about? But the whole temperament thing started when, um, during our marriage counseling, that was somewhere around 2004 there, we went through it and 
I met these words for the first time. Okay. And I was given a checklist, okay? Mm -hmm. So you need to know your temperament to be able to live better, okay? So I completed it and I was told that you are temperament. A, let's assume phlegmatic oh. for, the, for the sake of this conversation. So I went through life knowing that I'm a phlegmatic, for example. But there are certain things that was a bit of concern to me. For example, you know, you will see, maybe I'll see a colleague and the person's life is so perfect. You know, the person is a complete perfectionist. And I wonder why, I wish I'm like that, you know. So, mm -hmm. so, so because of that, I look at myself and I feel that maybe I'm not good enough. So it got you curious. Yes, but at the same time too, when you give me projects, whether I'm into it or not, no matter what you put on my hand, as long as I lay my hands on it, I'm able to do it. So I was somehow, okay, why is my life like this? But the turnaround came when I went into a training session okay. on temperament. So as the person was going through the different kind of temperaments, this time around, it wasn't a checklist. It was more like these are the various types and the characteristics. So I looked at myself, I said, hmm, I don't think I'm a phlegmatic. I think I belong here. Then the more the person went on to talk about it, the more I felt that I was not who I thought I was all these okay. years. So long story short, at the end of the day, I asked a friend, and the friend said, no, you cannot be this, this is, you know, confirming my thoughts. Mm -hmm. After that, then I now started to understand why I behaved the way I behaved, why certain things came to me so easily, mm -hmm. why other things, maybe I found a bit of a struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after that, I told myself that, no, I think I will go more into this to learn and more be about... Be a crusader of temperament. Yes, yes, so that was how come I actually started to talk about temperament to learn more mm -hmm. then i thought that there might be quite a number of people out there mm -hmm. who are maybe who are being told that they are this temperament per a checklist but they are not and they are wondering why i behave why they behave a certain way okay. so basically i would say that that is how this whole temperament thing started wow 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 yeah. wow that is interesting because um you, you, it got to a point where you realized that there's more to your behavior than you thought. Yes. So you yes. needed to dig deeper. Yes, yes. That's good. So now, to set, you have mentioned some terminologies here and there, phlegmatic, like sanguine, and all that. We'll get to that for you to explain to us because uh, I believe by now some people are Googling and <laughs> asking themselves questions. So you help us to understand all that. But just to start on a very flexible note, uh, from where you, you started off. What is temperament? When we talk about temperament, what are we talking about? Okay, so when you talk about temperament, um, let me start by this example. I do beads in my spare time, okay, for myself. So sometimes, you know, uh, when you are doing beads, you follow a particular pattern. So I would do it, and when I'm done, I want to make sure that everything is in line. Mm -hmm. It would take me about five, 10 minutes for me to check. But my daughter would just come, pick it up, and say, Mom, you missed a color here. Okay, so somebody would sit and think that why was she able to, at such a tender age, able to see what I couldn't see. It is simply because of what we call this temperament thing. Temperaments are the basic strength and weaknesses we were all born with. They are the natural strength we were all born with. Okay, so... Let's take, for example, the ability to lead. Mm -hmm. So you will find now that even if you take a group of children, just tell them to go and play. Maybe, you know, just leave them, give them some toys, and they should go and play. You will find out that even though they are children, you have not really appointed this is the leader, you would find one person always come mm -hmm. up, okay, trying to direct. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So you see that from that childhood stage, the person is a natural leader. Okay. And sometimes, no matter the age, you, you see this coming. And even in the office setting, you give a group work and you tell them, go and do this assignment. We will all come and you find somebody, okay, so what are we going to do now? Who will do what? So temperament, so the ability to lead 
for example, it's a natural thing. Ability to make decision quickly. There are certain things that come as strength. Okay. There are certain things that come as a natural weakness. For example, inability to control one's emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is one. So the first thing I mentioned is temperament is something we were all naturally born with our basic strength and weakness. Okay. Another thing I would like to talk about when we talk about temperament is that temperament is one of the things that influences our life the most. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one of the greatest influences of our lives. And you see, Doc, the more I research, the more I read, the more I really understand, okay, that a lot of the things that happened is as a result of our temperament. Mm -hmm. Some we know, some we don't know. Let me give you an example of... So before you give the example, w can we summarize the temperament to mean the behavioral traits of individuals that comes easily to them? Yes. Be it positive or negative? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, something that you can easily do with less effort, Efforts. Okay. less training. It mm -hmm. comes to you okay. naturally. Okay. Okay, so that's basically So please it. go ahead. Yes, example. I was going to give an example that we just celebrated festive, mm -hmm. you know, the Christmas season. And I want us to look at how our temperament would easily influence our decision. Mm -hmm. So you'll find out that some people, maybe let's say I was somewhere and in a team and somebody got up and said, okay, so it's Christmas season, what's going on? You know, are we going to situation? Mm -hmm. Are we going to 90s jam? You know, so the person's celebration of Christmas means going out to parties, uh, going out, you know, finding out what's happening in town, mm -hmm. making friends, you know, meeting new people, celebrating, really being happy. That is the person's definition of Christmas. Okay. That is how they choose to celebrate Christmas. And then you find other set of people who would mm -hmm. tell you that Christmas, I just want to be alone, you know, ponder about Christmas. If I have to celebrate, it's me and close friends, close families, you see. So you find out that, especially if there are two, mm -hmm. one per if one person is of the first mm -hmm. set, mm -hmm. person feel like, you know, doc, we have to, maybe doc's wife would like, Charlie, we have to go out to mm -hmm. 90s jam, we have to go here. And the maybe Doc person. would be like, I, I think we just have to, you know, sit down, yeah. you know, let's, you know, take one or two drinks, one or two within us. And you are happy. So this, in effect, these are all behavioral traits yes. that individuals yes. exhibit. Yes. Great examples. So I want us, we'll eventually link temperament to leadership qualities yes. and leadership yes. styles and all that. But as I said, let's break it down one after the other. So we've just spoken about temperament, behavioral traits, positive or negative, that comes to individuals easily. Yeah. And they exhibit those things anytime, at any point in time. Now, you mentioned some, I guess there were the different types of temperament. So what are the different, how many and what are the types of temperaments that we have? Okay, so basically we would look at the four main type of temperament, okay. you know, as... Um, by the great Greek philosopher, you know, he, um, Hippocrates. Okay. So we have the sanguine, mm -hmm. we have the choleric, mm -hmm. we have the phlegmatic and the melancholy. So the first two I mentioned, the sanguine and the choleric, they are what we call the extroverts. Okay. So it means that they derive their energy and their strength from their environment. Okay. So they're basically external people. Then the last two, that is the melancholy and the phlegmatic, they are the introverts. So what are the key characteristics of the sanguines and the cholerics and each one of them? Can you just okay. tell us? Thank you very much, Doc. So briefly, I'm sure as we go on into the leadership, we'll be seeing yes. a lot more of their characteristics. But basically... Um, if we take the sanguines, the sanguines are the people we call the life of the party. Huh? Okay, no matter how dull an environment is, be it at work, be it any event, if they are not there, the place is quiet. But as soon as a sanguine walks in, the place becomes lively. And you can see that even in the office setting. So they are the life of the party, they are very energetic. Mm -hmm. You know, they are optimistic people. 
um, they like to have fun and adventure. For them, their mind is, hey, let's have fun. Why is the fun happening? Okay. Um, life is too short to be stressed out. Charlie, let's, you know, let's go out and, you know, it means you a lot. When something has to be done, they are the first, okay, I'll do it. They'll volunteer a lot. I'll do a lot of things. But implementation and focus becomes a problem because mm -hmm. they talk a lot. They'll promise me something. By the time they come to you, they've even forgotten what they have said to me. Yeah. Unless you remind them. Except maybe if they haven't, maybe if there is some, a bit of fun element. Then okay. they will focus on it. Yes, then they are likely to remember. They are the people who you see today, they can't find their khakis. You know, they don't know where their shoes are. You know, where is this my shirt? You know, so basically, in, briefly, that is the sanguine. Yeah. The cholerics. Mm -hmm. Cholerics are the bone leaders, who you consider the bone leaders. They are goal-oriented. They are result-oriented. They are very determined people. Um, they have confidence as their hormone, okay? When a choleric walks into the room, you can see confidence, you can see enthusiasm, you know. Um, they are very determined. Whatever they want to do, they are achievers. Whatever they want to do, they make sure that they do it. Okay. The other side of them, or the area they struggle with, mainly had to do with their uh, controlling their, their perfect melancholy. Because these are the perfectionists. You know, when you are staying with, a, with um, a melancholy, the cup, everything is where it's supposed to be. Mm. Everything, you know, when you come and you shift the cup from here to here, they know that mm -hmm. you have shifted it. Mm -hmm. At the workplace, when you go, their, their decks are neat. Whatever they do is perfect. And for them, their, their goal is, if it has to be done, it has to be done right. right. Mm -hmm. So if it would take me extra day or two for me to get it done, mm -hmm. we have to be, at the end of the day, we have to do it right. So they are, the, they, they are perfectionists. And they have very high standards. Okay, when you are working with them, and you are, when you have a melancholic boss, you should know that he always expects more from you. Their standards are very high. They, are, they can be very moody. They are very sensitive. And sometimes, because of this, their perfectionist nature, they, there's a tendency sometimes to delay a bit on plan because they mm -hmm. want to make sure that everything okay, is okay. done right. So if you're not careful, they might miss uh, maybe a deadline or mm -hmm. two, or maybe they will give it to us. What, what do we do about this? Okay, um, okay, you know, before he makes up the mind, the other temperament can easily... This is what we are going to do. So in, in brief, these are, the, these are their main characteristics. But as I said, as we go, go on, on, we will be discussing okay. more of that. That's very detailed. Sanguines, they are all over the place. Yes. When they enter the room, there's fire. There is excitement. There is enjoyment. Mm -hmm. The sanguines are those who command, that have a commanding uh, quality where you know everything must be done, you know, and then the the choleric, the choleric, yeah, and then the the, mm -hmm. the 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 phlegmatic, uh, the see no evil, hear no evil, peace, yes, always peace mm -hmm. must prevail, and if all that. If you heard them cry, they would they would make, not for the sake of peace, you know, they are the type, even though I focus on work, they are type in relationship. When you are dating them, you are hurting them, they will never talk, they will just sit down one day and they give you boom, let's break up. Why? And then they, then they will not come and give you a whole lot of things you've done. And you're wondering, why is all of this? But they were mm -hmm. bottling it inside because mm -hmm. they didn't want to hurt you. Okay. Now, it has gotten to the point whereby they can't take it anymore. Wow. Yeah. So, Cherish was, I believe with all these discussions, the characteristics that Mrs. Um, Theodora has given us, we are individually examining ourselves, trying to look at how do you come across? What are your own qualities? Which category do you fall into? And so that it helps to identify or appreciate your own behavior and how you can, you know, manage and maneuver around your, your, your behavior, both in private and in public. Um, Mrs., you have given us a whole lot of characteristics. Now, may I ask, 
can we have people having a combination of any of the, the temperaments? Okay, yes. Okay. So basically, we all have about two main, um, two main types, okay? okay. Um, one would be the dominant, okay. and the second one would be the, the secondary temperament. Okay. So, but sometimes it depends on the, the balance, mm -hmm. okay? So if you have, if I'm a 50-50, let's say choleric and um, phlegmatic, okay. you will see that people will see me as choleric, and sometimes they'll be, they'll be confused as uh, phlegmatic. You will mm -hmm. see the two very clear, and okay. sometimes you might not really tell Okay. where you belong, but you really see I'm exhibiting both. But sometimes when we say somebody is a very strong melancholy, mm -hmm. it means the person has one percentage very high, maybe 70-80%. So if you're 70-80% um, uh, melancholy, which most of the time is the situation, you, you come across more as um, a melancholy. Mm -hmm. How well we are able to use our temperament or which side of our temperament we are operating from. from. Okay. okay, so that is very, very important. As we mentioned in the beginning, every temperament has their strength and their weakness. Okay. So if you are a choleric and you hear people often say, this is how I talk, because they are very blunt. Mm. When you want to tell them, don't talk this way, why do you, oh, this is how I talk, take, take me like that. It means that that individual have decided to work, operate mm. from the weakness side of the temperament. Okay. Whereas you can determine to operate from the strength on the positive side of your okay. temperament. You see, this is where the awareness comes in. If you know about it, then you are very conscious. I have this positive, so let me work on, let me mm -hmm. make sure, you know, I'm very good at project management. So in the office, if there are projects, let me come in and use, you know, and help, mm -hmm. you know, let me engage myself in more products. And even yeah. in our work, you don't... Uh, find yourself in, in work that would uh, make you spend a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's easy, I'm more productive when I take in work that I can do without training. much effort, okay. much training, mm -hmm. like a sanguine and MC. When a sanguine sleeps and you wake up, how do I come across? In a team, how do I behave? Likewise yourself, these are questions we need to begin to ask ourselves. As leaders or potential leaders, we need to appreciate our own behavioral traits, which we define as temperament, which what are the things that come to you naturally and what are the things that you struggle with. And which side of the coin do you, you know, do you play from or do you operate from? These are critical questions we need to ask ourselves. Before we continue the conversation, let's take a breather and when we are back, we'll continue on the leadership you know, uh, pedestal. Looking for an excellent professional risk management and training solutions provider? Look no further. Your ultimate solution provider is here at V5 Solutions Limited. We support you with our professional skills in building capacity of your teams and managing all your operational risks. Our best bespoke solutions include private and corporate security risk management and training, fraud investigation, occupational safety and health management and training, project monitoring, evaluation and research, supply of private security, logistics equipment. Our solutions are professionally delivered with in-depth focus on people, processes and procedures the environment and ultra modern technology contact us now on 0303-957136 and 053-5176615 or send us an email at info at v5solutionslimited.com for a partnership that strengthens a company for an excellent sustainable productivity and profitability visit our website at www.v5solutionslimited.com for more details v5 solutions limited your ultimate professional risk management and training hub.
Bob. Welcome back. This is Leadership 360. Please just tune in. This is the program where we share knowledge with regards to leadership development so as to enable us to learn, unlearn, and relearn to accelerate our efforts at effective leadership for the betterment of our societies. This calls for also a change and understanding of change management and strategy for our organizations, for our communities, for our nation, and for the continent, so that all of us can contribute meaningfully to the, our societies. This is Leadership 360, live on DSTV channel 277, and we are live also on Metro TV Ghana, or Facebook Metro TV Ghana. We have so far been discussing temperaments, the various types of temperaments where Mrs. Uh, Theodora Sinaya has taken us through uh, such types, the four critical types as sanguine, uh, choleric, phlegmatic, and melancholic, melancholy. And one of us operates basically from two, you know, these two, two types. Within us lie two types of tem uh, temperament. But each one of us must identify which one is stronger and we are positive and we work with that for our own good as leaders. Now, we're going to turn our lens onto examining this temperament and their impact on leadership. By that, we're going to start straight away by saying, what are the different types of leadership styles that each Anybody with the, the various types of temperaments exhibit, starting with the sanguine and you move on. What leadership styles do they usually uh, adopt? Okay, so for the sanguine, the sanguine leader, um, since naturally they are front people, uh, you can also see that from their leadership style. Okay, mm -hmm. so their leadership is combined with not too much of stress not that every time they are doing party but you find out that there will be a little bit of excitement you know they are because they are also inspirational they mm -hmm. like to motivate mm -hmm. so their their leadership style is more of motivation inspiring mm -hmm. no matter how difficult the task is the sanguine leader will come and tell you you can do it it's possible okay so they become very effective when they have the other temperament balance coming in mm -hmm. because of their inability to focus, focus and because of their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So you find out that when you have, for example, the sanguine leader and then maybe you have the melancholic as a help, it becomes very, they become very effective because they are not very good with details. Mm -hmm. So, but generally, for the sanguine leader, they always inspire and encourage, motivate you. And then the environment is also mixed with fun, you know. Okay. When you go to the office, you know, you can joke, you can laugh. They don't have a problem. It's not all the time you go and their faces are so straight and mm -hmm. everything is about their work, you know, that kind okay. of thing. If you take the choleric mm -hmm. leader, choleric, they are very blunt. They... They are yes is they are yes, they are no is they are no. They don't mm -hmm. know how to say it's gray mm -hmm. when it is black or when it is white. Mm -hmm. If it is clean, it, they will say it as, as it, it is. is. Okay. Irrespective of who the people on the table are. Okay. Irrespective of the situation. Okay. They, are very, they are very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you find out that generally, I would like to say that for the choleric, they, they respect leadership. But they don't fear leadership. Okay, they respect leadership because you find out that what the other temperaments are not able to say to leadership, mm -hmm. a choleric can easily say without, with ease. With ease. And it's not like if they're intentionally, they intentionally want to hurt you or something. They don't see anything wrong with what they've said. They are just being them. That it is what it is. It is what it is. So okay. if you find a choleric being a leader, they are the type who can easily tell you that, hey, you messed up here, so you are fired. They okay. easily make, because they are also um, quick with decision making, mm -hmm. it also, it can be in the positive, it can also be in the negative. Okay. So you find that in their leadership style. When you look at the mm -hmm. melancholy, mm -hmm. 
The melancholic leader is very analytical. So whatever you are going to take to him, let's assume you are the melancholic mm -hmm. leader. Whatever I'm coming to take, bring to you, everything has to be on point. You know, the, the T's has to be crossed, the mm -hmm. I has to be dotted. You know, they are figures people, they will ask about their figures, they ask you about everything. So I always say when I'm doing my workshop that if you know, you have to know your boss as well. Mm -hmm. If you know your boss is uh, melancholy, mm -hmm. before you go with that report or you that presentation, you must be prepared. You must make sure that you have done all the industry analysis and all the research there is mm -hmm. because they have high standards too. So yeah. they also require high standards of you. Their leadership is more like it's, it's difficult to please them. Okay. It's difficult to please the melancholy. the melancholy because at any point in time they expect something higher you know they want everything to be perfect okay okay yes um choleric is oh, yes yeah choleric is difficult to satisfy them because at any point in time they're giving you more tasks to do okay. that's their leadership when you go to the phlegmatic mm -hmm. leader when it comes to the other leadership style or the other people with the most when it comes to emotional intelligence, you can't beat them on that. Okay. You know, no matter what is happening, if this place is on fire, everything you will see the choleric running around, the other people, what is happening. They're phlegmatic, they're calm. always cool and calm. They want to, they will sit down, they will think through the situation. You can't push them to. No matter what you do, that's why sometimes they, they are known to be very stubborn, sometimes because. When, when they make a decision, you can't push them. So they always take their time to make a decision. That is why even though it delays, they will end up taking, looking at both sides to make sure that all sides are satisfied. So you will find out that when they are in leadership, this is the kind of leader you get. So you would have, maybe if you have one leader, sometimes people get confused trying to compare two leaders. Maybe you have a boss who was... Um, a phlegmatic. And now they give you a lot of room to okay, to operate because they want to more like they want their peace of mind. Okay. Mrs. Yeah. Just hold it there before you continue so that mm -hmm. our viewers can participate in the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's about that time that we bring them on board. So if you want to participate in the discussion, just reach out to us via 02 uh, 0531 0531 Nine eight two two nine and nine eight. If you are out of the shores of Ghana, just add plus two three three, and you will reach us. The lines again zero five three one nine eight two two nine eight. Let's yes, continue. So Mrs. I was giving you the the example of sometimes people get staff get a bit confused. This show is always like that. Just as we announced, the first <laughs> caller has come through. Mohamed from Tamale. Good afternoon. Our usual caller. Welcome. How? Happy you are New quite Year. Well. Happy New yes. Year and uh, welcome to Leadership Resistance. The same to you too and, uh, uh, and your guests. Uh, you see, this time today we, we those who are teachers. We, we benefited a lot from the discussion. Thank you know, you. teachers, we also deal with these things, but we classify them as extroverts and introverts. Okay. And now, because we, are, uh, we, are, we, we have now pre uh, preferred discussion methods to teach our children, you, the teacher, that you don't have need to come and say that I'm I, I'm the only person, I'm the only one who have the knowledge. You put that thing on board for all of you, you and the children. So because of that, we normally say that both the teacher and the people contribute to make a successful lesson. Okay. Just, and then teachers know that extroverts are very active and they are those teachers want because they always inquire to know, they probe into know more, more than that. And because of that, even their own parents, mothers and so on, they fear them because when you say, what is this? And you say, you the parents say, uh, oh, this is called this. Why is it called that? Mm -hmm. Then they will continue asking the boy, 
And if you, you the teacher, if you don't take that in a class, the extroverts will take all the questions. And then the introverts, they are very quiet, they are seated, they will never ask, uh, ask, uh, ask, uh, ask any question. So it is left to you, the teacher, to identify them. So they carry okay. that to those things to All leadership. Right. Okay. And when they carry those things Mohammed, to leadership, please, okay. I Just will summarize. Uh -huh, so when they, yeah, when they carry them to them, that's where we have those who are quiet, they will, uh, these uh, introverts. Mm -hmm. Most of them are the less affair leadership. Okay. Less affair anything goes, okay. which we don't like. Thank you very much. Thank you too, and we are grateful you were able to get through to us once again this week. So, Mrs., you were okay, making so some saying, points. I was saying, but I don't know whether I can just make a statement. Oh, you can go what, ahead, please. Yes, so one important thing he mentioned is that, you see, and this happens a lot of times, sometimes even in the uh, in a workspace. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, or if a leader does not know about temperament, you always see the the extroverts, the choleric, for example, who, who are always the talkatives, you know, who speak their minds as the people who are working. Mm -hmm. The melancholy, for example, they are not the talkative at meetings. So before they talk, they will think to make sure whatever they are saying is correct. So that is why when we deal in the temperament workshop, we, we, we talk about, as leaders, how to manage each of them, you as a leader, as well as um, how to manage your staff. It's very important because you might have a phlegmatic staff who is there. You, if you don't know about temperament, you always think that this person is boring, this person is not, you know, like when everybody is okay. moving, the person is just like this. Like but that. when you know it, mm -hmm. then you find out that you're able to know, no, no this person is like this because of a temperament. Okay. So, so how please do hold I it. help? Please hold it there. Yes. Alaji Aya from Nantum, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Leadership Tracy in fact, Leadership 360 is one of my best programs. Thank you. I hope all uh, Ghana politicians will have time for this program. In fact, and all, if all politicians have time for this program, then the world would have changed. We, we pray that we uh, contribute our quota, and yes. with your support, we'll get there one day. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you explained something that... That, in fact, uh, that really enthused me. Emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, and from your explanation, what I have deduced from that is someone who is able to, to manage both introverts and then what? Extroverts. Mm -hmm. And all manner of people, if you are ready to carry them along. Along to achieve the mission and objective of whatever you are uh, doing. Exactly. In fact, that is the problem that we are facing among teachers and all the organizations. In fact, our leaders are not able to identify introverts and extroverts and put them uh, and give them kettles and according to how they are. Because if you give the job of what? Introvert to extrovert. He finds it very difficult to handle. And then if you give the other one, the other way around to, mm -hmm. eh, the it's other way around to, they find it very difficult to handle. Okay. So well, in fact, this type of program will really enable us to know the difference between these two so that will be able to give them work according to what they deserve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate your contribution. Indeed, that is the essence of leadership precisely. We are happy you are acknowledging our contribution to society. So, Mrs. Doc, please continue. You see, emotional intelligence. I mentioned from the beginning that temperament are the natural strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. we are all born with. Yeah. The choleric individual one of their main weaknesses they were born with is anger, mm -hmm. anger, anger issues. Okay. The phlegmatic, they were born, they okay. have that I think, strength. I think what you are going to say is very important. So let me cut in and bring Emmanuel Amar from Accra Newtown.
Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to Leadership 360. Your points, please. Yeah, thank you. I just want to ask a question that can religion, can religion move somebody into an introvert or an extrovert? Pardon me, I did not hear the word. Uh, you mean remitting? Religion, 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 like Christianity religion. or... Okay, okay, religion, okay. Mrs. Can religion mold a person's temperament? Okay, so we have to distinguish between temperament and character. Okay, well, what we call the nature and the nurture. Okay. So religion has its play when it comes to temperament. Mm -hmm. In that, temperament is what I said we were born with, mm -hmm. and then... But you see, let's assume we are both uh, phlegmatics. Mm -hmm. So if I am a, a, a Muslim and then you are a Christian, it has a way of molding. Molding, yes. So we say that the character comes in and then when, with the addition of the religion, your upbringing, parental training, mm -hmm. the environment and mm -hmm. society, and all of that. Okay. So what I can say is that your, your temperament is what you came with. Okay. But the religion, I don't think religion can really help change, change your temperament. It will just influence. So yes. you find out that that is how it, um, you find out, maybe somebody will say this person is a polished choleric. Okay. I was talking about the emotional intelligence. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back. No, sorry, I had to cut you. Uh, Alassan from Amasaman, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Welcome uh, to Leadership Recency. Your point, please. Thank, thank you so much. And good afternoon to your, uh, your guest. Then. Okay. Um, so at least I wanted to ask a question concerning this temperament. Thing. And my question is that, uh, is it possible one can just study a certain temperament and then try to adapt? Maybe it is not something that you were born with. It's not something that is intrinsic. It's not something that is within you. But I just want to actually, maybe the, the way uh, maybe my boss at work is behaving, his temperament, I also want to adapt it. Is it possible one can switch from one uh, temperament to another switch, maybe from melancholic to choleric, or from this? Maybe you just wanna, you just you are just uh, admiring one particular temperament which you mm -hmm. want to switch to. Is it okay. possible? All right, thank you very much, Mrs. You can work on your temperament, but you cannot change it. Okay, you can work on it, you cannot change it. So. I would answer that, I would answer his question, uh, you admire your boss. So let mm -hmm. me assume that the caller is, um, is a choleric, the point I was explaining. Um, you have anger issues, but your boss is a phlegmatic, and he's very good at emotion. That is your boss's strength. Okay. So you will learn from your boss how to manage okay. your emotion. Okay. So you are not being changed from a choleric. That does not make you a phlegmatic. Okay. It makes you a polished choleric. Okay. In that, you are now working on your weaknesses, you get it. Okay. And that is one of the best ways to, to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. You build on your strength and you look at your weak, your weaknesses. Are, I, I say you can deal with them on two bits. Mm -hmm. One, you, those you can work on, mm -hmm. like the anger. Mm -hmm. You look at somebody who is very calm. You know, sometimes I said, okay, if you see I'm boiling up, just give me a wink. You know, I have to calm down. So those things you learn from your boss. And mm -hmm. with time, you find out that you're able to manage, manage. yourself and it makes you a better leader. The other way in which you manage your weaknesses is you delegate. There are certain things, for example, a sanguine and attention to details. Mm -hmm. That you will try, it will, give, it will make you, uh, it will take a lot of effort. But I always say that, so why do you want to spend 30 minutes doing something when somebody can use five minutes to do it? Mm -hmm. So as a good leader, you know the things you can learn and pick. Mm -hmm. The things you know very well that for this, for, to be an efficient leader, mm -hmm. know what to delegate. Annoying. And in delegating, you are allowing somebody whose strength is that activity to also mm -hmm. build the capacity. Then why you also focus on what is your strength? So I think that, yes, you will learn from it, but it does not make you change you, change you because, oh, okay. as I mentioned, that is how you were born. So I think it's good that he has asked that question. Okay. Yes. Now, um, we have spoken a lot, and we could continue There's on and on and on. Uh, but we have a belief on this program that leadership is effective when we subscribe to certain codes of ethics or honor code 
that will remind all of us on daily basis that you are not an island, you work with other people. So before we end every show, we ensure that we project and re-emphasize on this honor code. So let's take a look at our honor code and we shall be right back. Indeed, our own comfort, ease, and safety must always come last because we are leaders. Ours is to make sure our followers, our team members are better off than us so that society will be better for all of us. You're welcome back. And um, just your final words before we wrap up the show. Okay, so this my is... final words, Doc, would be that for every leader, make, try and know your temperament, okay? Secondly, you know the temperament of your staff. It's very important. If you know your temperament, you understand your strengths and your weaknesses, and you're able to manage them. If you know the, the temperament of your staff, it lets you know how to communicate, how to motivate, how to deal with each of them because I always say that when it comes to temperament and leadership, one size does not fit all. What motivates a melancholy, don't make a mistake, it does not motivate a choleric. And sometimes we don't get this right. We think one thing cuts across. So, so that would be my final words for every leader. As long as you are managing a team, know yourself, know the temperament of your staff so that you know how to deal with each and every one of them so that you get better results and enhance your productivity at the workplace. Thank you very much. Indeed, we all have to know ourselves, appreciate our own temperaments and those temperaments of our team members as well to lead effectively. That's the final words from Mrs. Theodora Senaya, our guest for today. It's been amazing and very exciting and insightful discourse for today we appreciate your presence your viewership and we pray that next week we continue with our discourse on leadership development on the leadership 360 program on that note thank you very much mrs for coming to share knowledge with us we are the team leadership 360 appreciate your contribution thank you very much viewers hope to see you next week Bye.